to fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World, and today we're here in Sevilla, Spain. And today what we have for you are the don'ts of visiting Sevilla. If you're going to be here in the summer in Sevilla, I got to give you this don't. Don't mess with the heat and the sun in the middle of the day. Take that siesta. Go hang out at your hotel. Go hang out at your hostel if you can. Go someplace to get out of the heat because the sun and the heat in the summer can be very, very dangerous for travelers. So take that break when you are here. So before you even get here to Sevilla, I have a don't for you. And that is don't forget to pre-book your tickets if you want to go to the cathedral or if you want to go to the Alcazar because they both do book out, not like years in advance or months in advance, but at least like a week or two in advance. So make sure you're pre-booking those because if you think you can just roll up and get in, sometimes you can. Sometimes you can walk up and get a ticket. It's no big deal. Other times, I mean, full like high season, forget about it. Even shoulder season, it can get pretty busy pretty quick and sell out. So, you know, a couple weeks before you go, maybe do look into getting those tickets so you can make sure you do get in there. So if you want to go into the cathedral and you want to see Columbus's tomb and you want to see the, the chapels that are there, I mean, that's one thing you really want to do. Same thing with the Alcazar. You want to make sure you have the tickets so you can get in and you can enjoy it, all right? So that's that's one really big thing as a tourist you really need to make sure you do. Oh, yeah, and don't forget, you can actually climb all the way to the top if you like. It's about 100 meters up. I mean, it's doable, and it's, like, made for horses to go up, so it's not as bad as just steps, but, uh... Do know it's quite a hike, and when it's about 105 degrees in the summer, it's not the most fun thing, but the views are great, so, uh... Just, just be warned about that one. And the thing is, when you come here, a lot of people just think of the Alcazar and the cathedral. My next one for you is don't think that Sevilla is just this Alcazar and just the cathedral. There's so many more museums when you're here. The San Isidro, you can go and see the blue tiles. They have that huge collection of blue tiles there. There's a contemporary art museum. You know, there's Flamenco Museum. There's a bullfighting museum. There's all kinds of great museums around here from you know, the state of Andalusia and, and for the city as well. So don't think the only culture you're going to get is a church and some gardens and palace, maybe? No, there's a lot more to it here. Now, if you do get tired of seeing all the historic stuff, you know, the Alcazar, the Cathedral, and the Tower of Gold, and all that fun stuff, don't forget you can go to the Plaza de Incarnacion and you go to Las Setas. That's where I'm at now. You're actually, I'm on top of this installation. You can see it. It's really cool to see from just outside, but going up to the top, you have some incredible views of the city, so don't be afraid to pay the entry fee to go up the Mirador. Yes, there's a 15-minute video they show about it, but you don't have to watch that. You can just go straight to looking at the views and walking around. I will warn you, though, this is not handicap accessible because there's lots of steps going around. So do be aware of that. But for the views, you don't want to pass this up. Because even after you come out of the market, you come up to the mirror door. I mean, the sun will beat down on you. will get hot. So please don't forget to bring a hat, some coverings, wear your sunblock. Because you'll get fried when you're walking around here. And a lot of people think, oh, I only get burned on the beach. No, no, no. You'll get burned when you're walking around the city, too. So do be safe. I just want to reinforce that because I've seen a lot of burned tourists walking around the city. I don't want that to happen to you. So just just be prepared for it, okay? So if you're trying to beat the severe heat in the summer and you need to get in a little bit of air conditioning, but you don't want to have to go pay for things, if you're at Las Cetas, you know, the mushroom thing, the wood thing, the market underneath here is air conditioned. And since they have all the meats and stuff, it actually can be a lot cooler. So if you need a place to kind of... Uh, catch your breath and get out of the heat, just come to the market underneath Las Cetas. It'll, it'll make your day, okay? Now, when you come out of the cathedral, I got another dome for you. Don't fall for the people that are trying to give you herbs. Um, they're going to tell you it's a healing thing. They're going to tell you something, but they're going to say, hey, it's for free. Let me give it to you. Look, they're going to want something in the return. They're going to want money when they're finished with it. So just don't just say no, thank you and walk away. They can be a bit forceful, especially if you have kids, because I've had it where they literally force things onto our kids and then tell us, well, your kid took it. You have to give us money don't 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 fall for that you do not have to give them anything just say hey i don't want anything leave me alone and you'll be okay because they will come up whether you're sitting at a table you're eating or you're walking around i see a lot between right between the cathedral and the alcazar you have that so be aware also don't forget to pay attention when you're walking around this is a tourist mecca here in spain which means pickpockets are around too so don't forget to pay attention when you're walking around keep that wallet in your front pocket because Yes, even though it's a fantastic city with beautiful sights to see and wonderful people, there's some not-so-wonderful people, too, that will pickpocket you, so do be aware of that. When you're coming to Sevilla, you have to realize this is one of the most popular destinations in Spain for tourists, and I gotta say, don't get overwhelmed with all the tourists. When you're coming in and out of the cathedral, going to the Alcazar, walking in the smaller streets, you know, in the more historic parts of the city, it can be overwhelming. Like, I've seen people literally breaking down because they couldn't take all the people. It's not everywhere. That's why sometimes you'll notice 
you'll be at busy spots and there's not a lot of people, but then all of a sudden it'll fill up really quickly. So just be aware of that. So if you're claustrophobic or you don't like dealing with tons of people at one time, just know you can find some side streets because most of the people stay on the main kind of uh, tourist boulevards. They don't go off on the side roads. So you can walk off there for a bit to kind of catch your breath because I just saw a lady freaking out and I was like, this is probably something we need to talk about. So you will have a lot of tourists when you're here and that does mean they drive up some prices, but it's not so bad here, but I just want to give you the heads up for it. And I got to tell you, don't think Plaza de España is just another plaza here in Spain. This is a next level architectural feat and the meaning behind so many things in the Plaza de España is incredible. So if you get a chance, you're in Sevilla, just come here. If you just want to listen to music or hop in one of the boats here or go walk in the park across the way, you can enjoy it. But yeah, don't, don't think this is just a square. It's so much more than that when you're here in Sevilla. So when you're here in Sevilla, there's actually two very stereotypical Spanish events, cultural phenomenons that you will see here. And if you want to take part of them, this is probably the place you want to do it. One is flamenco. So don't miss a flamenco show when you're here. Look for that tableau, okay? That's the sign you want to do. But you'll see people, you know, doing flamenco in the streets or people trying to, you know, busk for money doing flamenco or just practicing flamenco in the parks. You'll see that. But honestly, it's worth it to pay to go see a flamenco show when you see the real professionals. It is fantastic. So that's one thing. And if you don't like flamenco or you can't see a show, guess what? They have a flamenco museum here too. So you could do that. Another very stereotypical Spanish thing that people think about is bullfighting. And you can go see a bullfight when you are here. The season is April through September. And if you're here at a season, they do have a bullfight museum you can go see. Um, I will tell you, if you go, it can be a bit gruesome, okay? Or a bit more than gruesome. So do be aware. So if you don't like blood, I do not recommend you going to a bullfight, okay? No joke. You got to be smart with the water when you're here. Just keep drinking and keep buying it. So don't forget to stay hydrated when you come here. Because this heat and sun can be dangerous, okay? I think I've harped on that enough now, right? Don't forget to bring your kids when you come to Sevilla because there's a lot of stuff for them to do. But I think the most important thing you need to do with your kids when you come here is go to Isla Magica. It's the amusement park around here. The rides are great for all ages. The whole family can enjoy it. We've gone there with the boys when they were tiny, when they were a little bit older. It's a nice, fun, family-friendly amusement park that you'll really enjoy, okay? So go there and, and do be ready to get wet when you do go there. There's a lot of uh, water attractions when you're there. And with this heat, I think it's really important they have that. So be aware. I gotta tell you, don't sleep on the local food when you're here in Sevilla. The Solomillo uh, whiskey, yes, it's like thin pork steaks and a whiskey sauce. It sounds like it's so simple and, and just plain, but it's amazing. The Solomillo uh, whiskey, the pork and the whiskey sauce, it's from here, it's pretty good. Really good. Or maybe you should have a Serenito, which is a, how do I explain this? It's a pork loin sandwich with, of course, ham on it as well. And grilled peppers, yeah, that's really good too. And then you've got pringa, which I, I think the best way to explain it is the Sevilla version of a sloppy joe. And I can tell you a don't. Don't ask all the meat that's, that's in there. Just assume there's a lot of meats in there, then they make it. But it's really tasty. Because that's just it. Sevilla, there's so many tourists. There's tons of great restaurants here. You're going to eat well. Even eat something simple like the spinach and, and chickpeas. I mean, it's, it's something that's going to fill you up and be good. And you're going to eat well. So whether it's tapas bars or restaurants or... Even smaller kiosks, you can eat really well when you're here. And I mean, seriously, I'm not making it up. Doesn't look like a spinach artichoke dip. It does have a little spice, but it is, it's really good. I mean, if you just get the bread and dip it in there, you'll be happy. One thing that's cool is don't think you have to bust your budget when you come to Sevilla. Now, I'm not going to say Sevilla is cheap, okay? Because Sevilla is one of the more pricey cities to visit as a tourist in Spain. But they do such a good job that having stuff for tourists of all budgets, whether it's accommodation, whether it's you know going to sites or eating, that you can really make it whether you're going for the cheap or you're going for the fancy. You can do that with the food or the drink. And oh yeah, don't forget about the local drinks when you're here. And you know, you'll see a, like orange wine here and I don't think orange wine is made out of oranges. It's just the sweet wine that's here. And they put orange rinds in it to give it that flavor. So this is what the Vino de Naranja looks like. The uh, orange wine, it's just normal wine. They just have the rinds in there that made it flavored up. They pour it from a bottle just like normal wine too. So you have that so. It's very refreshing. I like it. I like this a lot. you got manzanilla, which is the sweet wine that's here. That's really good. You can have that. What's great is they serve it ice cold in this heat. It makes a huge difference. Now, if you've been in Spain in the summer, you know the Tinto de Verano, which is the other you know, red wine mixed with, you know, basically Sprite. They, you can get that all over. Well, they have their own version over here using the sweet wines when you're here. 
It's called Rebajito, and it is very refreshing because it's cold and it's lightened up, but it has that sweet wine versus a normal wine. So it, it really does give it a very distinctly different flavor when you're having it. So this is the Rebujito. That's the, you know, the sherry, the sweet wine, and then basically Sprite. And honestly, you can have that or the Tinto de Verano when you're here. It'll help you cool off in this heat and the sun. So if you're coming to Sevilla on a weekend, I got to tell you, don't expect to do any shopping on Sundays. Things do close up. And even if you're not here on the Sundays, don't forget about siesta because with all that heat and sun you have here, people do take advantage of the siesta gear. It's not as popular as it once was. Even five years ago, more of the places were closed during the two to four hours. But you do see it sometimes where things are still closed during that two to four period. So just be aware of that when you're here because it's not going to be all the time shopping. So if you see some stuff you like, like cool clothes. I mean, women's clothing here is fantastic and shoes, whether men's or women's shoes are great. You can do that, but just know Sundays, it's not going to happen. And, and don't think you're going to be able to do that shopping in the siesta hours as well, but do take advantage of the siesta hour to get out of the sun, maybe have a tapa or two, you know, like we talked about and have a drink. You'll be okay. So we're down here on the river by the Torre del Oro, the gold tower. And I got some don'ts for you where you're down here on the river. One, don't forget, you can actually go up in there and that's kind of a cool view. Two, don't forget you can take cruise ships and go up and down the river for a nice little river cruise. That's nice. And three, don't forget there's other neighborhoods here in Sevilla aside from the historic part. Because if you go across the river, tons of restaurants, some nice churches to check out, a few museums, but also lots of accommodation you can go to that's a little bit more affordable than the old town. And it's an easy walking distance, okay? So don't forget the other side of the river and the things to do here. And speaking of some of those museums, you can actually visit the Casa de Pilatos right here. It's a ducal palace, but also they have really great artwork in there as well. So you can actually go do a tour there. So if you're looking for something non-churchy, you do have that. Don't forget, when you're walking in the uh, smaller streets in Sevilla, um, don't think it's the taxi or the car that has to get out of the way. It's you. You're the one who has to jump into the you know doorway. You're the one who has to jump out of the way. So uh, just be aware so you don't get uh, smushied. So when you're here in Sevilla, you might notice bikes running right past you and you don't even realize you're actually walking the bike lane. So don't forget these little silver dots in between there, that's the bike lane. They don't have lines, it's just those silver things. And I see a lot of tourists just walking the bike lanes almost getting hit. So do be careful with that because honestly, renting a bike here and driving around is very easy. It's a nice thing to do, it saves you time, but you gotta be careful because remember, these are the bike lanes. So if you're walking, Pedestrians, pay attention, okay? Don't think that's where you're supposed to be. But don't worry, outside the historic part, they're very nicely marked where the bike lanes are. Though people still walk in them, so uh, have a heads up so you don't get run over by a bike here. Now my next tip for you is probably an obvious one, especially if you've been here about, I don't know, five minutes, and that is to not drive in the historic part of Sevilla. I know you wanna rent a car and explore Andalusia, that's really great. But I'd recommend exploring Sevilla itself and then going to rent your car and getting out because honestly, driving around the historic park in the center is extremely difficult. It's easy to get lost. It's hard to find your way out. And you don't want to spend an extra 30 minutes trying to figure out which way you're going to go. So if you are going to drive, make sure you have your GPS already set up before you take off. Don't be like, oh, we'll get it on the way. No, have it already set up. Also, look for some alternate routes in case you know, a street's blocked off or they're working on something. I mean, because it does happen here. And that's why it gets very, very frustrating driving in Sevilla. So don't do it if you don't have to. The city's incredibly walkable, so you don't really have to. Because even if you're starting to Santa Vista Station, you're walking to Las Setas, coming down to the Alcazar and the Cathedral, then going to Plaza de España, it's like less than an hour of walking. And you have so many great things to see here. So don't waste your time on driving and because honestly it'll make you rip your hair out so you look like bald like me okay that's that's the only advice i can give you on that one a little bit of history don't for you when you're here in sevilla don't forget this is where they kind of ran the discoveries the new worlds out of because this is why this city has so much money and so many beautiful buildings and so much history here is because a lot of money a lot of gold a lot of silver passed through here and this building right here that's where they ran it from the archivos de india you can actually go there and see that it's a unesco world heritage site because of all the stuff that happened there and, and the archives they have in there. So that is something you can check out when you're here. So if this video helped you know what to do and don't do when you do come here to Sevilla, it is a beautiful city with so much history, so much culture, so much fun, and so much heat. So uh, if you have more tips and more don'ts and more do's about coming to Sevilla, please put it in the comment section below so we can help other travelers enjoy this beautiful city even more. And I'll say hasta luego from here in Sevilla.